If we're in Scotland, why don't you take us to the Edinburgh Festival for a couple of days? To two. To two? Sir, that is a brilliant idea, Professor Birdwood. Scintillating, Cynthia. Meanwhile, I can carry on working on my antidote here undisturbed. What about the base? Oh, I think we can take care of that, can't we, sir? Oh, of course, I don't think anything very drastic. Don't be such a snivel. We'll have our revenge. Edinburgh. Here we go. Rehearsing the tattoo. Tattoo? Oh, Edward. Surely this isn't it. Is this Gary Irving guest house? Oh, oh. Don't like green. Oh, don't be fussy, Tammy. Come on in. What a dump. Well, it's jolly difficult to find accommodation in Edinburgh during festival time. This place did at least have some rooms free. I'm not surprised. I expect the people will be nice, friendly, and welcoming. You'll never see me. Were. Yeah, anyway, we'd better be going. Oh, my God, for goodness sake, open the door! No, you must have heard me just now. What? That was my play. Your play? Yes, my one-man version of Robert Louis Stevenson's immortal Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Yes, I perform it every year at the festival. That was the moment when Mr. Hyde calls upon a friend. Ah, where do you perform your play? Here. Here. Yes, I turn it into a little theater. Of course, it's as uh, big as many of the venues at the festival. <laughs> Why, last year, one actor did a Hamlet in a phone box. The dirty devil. He means the Shakespeare play, Tammy. <laughs> anyway, I telephoned to make reservations. Jack Green, the Stevens family, and Tammy McIntosh. But of course, yes. The register. <laughs> Can you see them? See. Jack Green is talking to some guy. And the rest of the family are there as well. But they sure are a long way away. It's a very big house. Well, we know where he's staying. Now, for a revenge so terrible, one can hardly think of it. Good, good. What is it? I'm trying to think of it. <laughs> and how is everything? Uh, Delicious. Very good. nice indeed. Thank you. We were very lucky you had rooms free. Well, now, I don't have many guests. No, uh, you may not have noticed, but the house isn't in a very good condition. Oh, well, the older the fiddle, the sweeter the tune. Yes. <laughs> and that's why I'm hoping that this year's production will change all that. Why? Are you getting the actors to decorate the place? It is a one-man show. No, I'm hoping that this year's show will be the talk of Edinburgh. And then, of course, everyone will want to come and stay here. Oh, thereby enabling you to raise the money and pay for the repairs. But of course, yes. This house has been in the McHugh family for five generations. It would be a crying shame if it were to fall down for lack of repair. Fall down? I'm speaking metaphorically. Oh, sounds like oh. English to me. Ha-ha! <laughs> the post! Oh, 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 I do love opening the mail. Who knows what wonderful surprises it'll hold for me today. <laughs> this yes. building falls down while I'm in it, I'll sue them. Oh, I don't think we've anything to worry about. 
After all, it stood for over a hundred years. It'll stand for a few more. Give or take a day or two. Oh! More toast, Tammy. Oh. What happened? Oh. Are you ill? I was in the St. John's ambulance. Oh. I was? You were in Earth, St. John's ambulance. They took you to hospital when you sprained your ankle. Are you all right, Mr. McHugh? Oh. I've just received the most calamitous news. Oh? Read that. Oh. Dear Hugh, I'm sorry, but we have had a terrible tragedy in the family. <laughs> Our pet goldfish, Erasmus, was eaten yesterday by next door's cat. <laughs> How terrible. Surely they can get another goldfish. That's not the calamity. Read on. No. Oh. As a result, we are too broken-hearted to help you with your show this year. Sorry, Hector and Maisie Spoons. Yes. What did they do for your show? I expect they were the audience. Oh, they did all the stage management. Looked after the lighting and the audience. Oh, what am I going to do? How could I possibly do this show on my own? I thought it was a one-man show. Can't you get any to help you. Not at this short notice, no. The performance is tomorrow evening. Oh, what am I going to do? Well, if there's anything we can do. You will? Oh, wonderful, yes. Oh, I knew you were good people the moment I saw you. You will do the lighting, and you will be the stage management, and you and Tammy will see to the audience, and you... I'm not free. Dress rehearsal is at 11 o'clock this morning. Now step we daily on we go. Let's work together, we'll have you. Now step we daily on we well, go. Well, it's all in a good cause. Oh. That's one of the worst night's sleep I've ever had in my life. You're right for you, lying out in the cool air. I'm... Uh, uh, Fresh and invigorated? No, frozen. Mm. Oh, don't be such a snivel. Get up, we've got work to do. Today's the day we get our revenge on Jack Green. Uh, uh, see, this morning we uh, kill him. No, not this morning. Later. Later? Oh, we don't want to get caught. Now listen, you go to the house and check out how the land lies. How it lies, it looks flat. And then we make plans. I think I'll have fish for breakfast. <laughs> right, we're off. Oh. Where are you going? To a museum of Scottish history. Oh, that sounds like fun to me. Well, at least there'll be more fun than what you're doing with this terrible play. Uh, terrible! Tammy, everyone to their own idea of fun. Reserve judgment until after you've seen it. Perhaps you'd like to stay and see a rehearsal. Ha! Huh, I'd rather Just be here with a wet yeah. fish. That can be arranged. Now, come along. Yeah. Tammy, Tammy, Edward, let's go. Culture awaits us. <laughs> right, speaking of culture, Let's see this play of yours. Ah, oh, but of course. But first, I must go and get my secret costume. Secret costume? Yes. It is a monster costume to show Mr. Hyde for the monster he really is. Sounds interesting. It will be the hit of the evening. <laughs> yes. I have kept it a secret because there are other actors and producers in Edinburgh for the festival who might steal the idea. It is so brilliant. Now, wait there. I reckon he found the band. Shh. He's an artist. Yes, a con artist. He's got us working here for nothing. It's all in a good cause. It does you good to help other people. Oh, oh. You don't think that's overdoing it a little? Oh, no, no. These are Mr. Hyde's insides. Uh. His inside feelings. Monstrous. <laughs> That's the home right. That's the monster we made here in Edinburgh. <laughs> Wait till I tell Mrs. Vixen. You 
value your life. Get out! This shed isn't big enough for both of us, you mouse! <laughs> you think you're so tough, eh? Big Sanders! Where are you? Jack Green has got the monster. He's got the monster what? No, not a monster what? He's got our monster, the one what we made, what got away from us. What? Yes. He must have found it and brought it here, hidden in the shoe of his car. The boot of the car, boot, the word boot. Look, if you're making this up... I, no, it's, it's true, I swear. I heard it with my own eyes. I saw him and those two kids talking to it in the house. <laughs> This calls for an intelligent investigation. See, see, I go back. No, <laughs> I said intelligent. I'll go. So what do you want me to do? You want me to stay here and do brave things here? If it is our monster, it'll need both of us to capture it. You better come too. Yes, we'll go to their boarding house while they're out and have a good look round. But say somebody catches us. That's easy. We simply say that we're two important theatrical producers looking for fresh talent. The whole place is crawling with them. Nobody will think anything of it. So, Mr. Hyde, we meet at last, eh? Aye, Dr. Jekyll, indeed we do. Then die, you villain! At this point, which is the end of the play, the audience breaks into loud applause. Oh, uh, right. Ah, yes. oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, what did you think, eh? Oh, it was most interesting. Oh. It had to be seen to be believed. Don't you think so, Joe? Why, that's indeed what I've written on my posters. Look! Jekyll and Hyde tonight. One performance only. Has to be seen to be believed. Yes. The only trouble is I've no one to stick them up for me. You see, my dear friends, the spoons. Oh, yes, yeah. the spoons we know. You yeah. will? Oh, you really are a wonderful person. Now, look. Only stick them up in the official places. Otherwise, the authorities might take offence and close my play down. And that would be a great tragedy, wouldn't it? Oh, four. Uh, you can rely on us, Mr. McHugh. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he thinks that show is going to save his house, he might as well knock it down now. <laughs> Uncle Jack! What is it, Kate? Look, over there, beside the umbrella. It's that South American general chappy, Jose Cuerva. I bet he's up to no good. Right, let's call the police and have him arrested. That, uh, calm down the pair of you. All right, he did some bad things in the past. But he's served his time in prison and that's all over now. I expect he's just up for the festival. And by the look of him, he's gone into show business. But Uncle Jack... No, no, I suggest we go about our business and leave him to get on with his and hope that he's turned over a new leaf. Come on, we've got these posters to put up. Okay, they've gone. You fool. They saw you. Yes, they did. But they didn't recognize me. Why? Because I am a master of disguise, a man of... Story. The whole mystery is where your brain is. <laughs> oh, visitors. <laughs> Where'd you reckon they give the monster? Well, that's what we're here to find out. Mm. And once we find out, we steal it, huh? <gasps> They've come here to steal my monster costume. Now you start with the bedrooms upstairs and I'll take a look round here. Can I help you? Oh, hello. Oh, good heavens. It's Robert Redford. Well? I had no idea you were appearing at the festival, Mr. Redford. <laughs> but uh, I, I am not Robert Redford. You look exactly like him. The same hypnotic stare, the same manly face. 
Well, now you mention it, the resemblance has been remarked upon before. <coughs> Who by? My mother. <laughs> Darling. <laughs> now, we're here because we're two important theatrical producers looking for new talent. Oh, yes. <laughs> and I know why you're really here. You do? Yes. You're here for my monster, but you're not going to get him. It's not your monster, it's our monster. Wonderful generalism. <laughs> That's what I call keeping a secret. Now look, if you don't get out of here this moment, I shall have to get tough with you. You gonna get tough with me? I'll have you know I was a member of the Mabel McQuinney School of Dancing. There, they strengthen your muscles. Look. <laughs> oh, look. Ah! Oh, oh, I'm going to show you what tough means. Get him. Oh, I got you. Hey, you see me from the Now, I will kill you. Help! 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 Please! What happened? I was attacked by two theatrical producers. What? Why? They wanted to steal my monster idea for my play. Oh, it's a tough world, to theater. What did they do to you? They sprained my ankle, and now I can't do my play. And we've just gone around putting up all those posters. Not to worry. You'll be able to do it next year. Yes, but this is the year I know I've got an audience coming. It's a pity there isn't anyone who can do the play for you. No one else knows the lines. Hector Spoons isn't in Edinburgh this year. Uncle Jack knows it. <laughs> Hello, Jack. How are you feeling? Terrible. I don't know why I agreed to do this. Well, to help someone who's less fortunate than yourself. Yes, at the moment, I should say that was probably Robert Louis Stevenson. Who? The man who wrote the original book. Oh, well, uh, I'm off to help with the lighting, so uh, good luck. Oh, you mustn't say that. In the theatre, we say, break a leg. Why on earth should anyone want to break a leg? I don't know. It's just what actors do. I suppose that's why McHugh is limping around the place. <laughs> Funny people, actors. <laughs> Now, where's that wig? Oh, I know, it's upstairs. Michael was cleaning his shoes with it. Now, oh, remember, we must be very, very quiet. We don't want anyone to know where he was. <laughs> you think anybody heard? Not if they got their earplugs in. Anyway, we'll find the monster. <laughs> Oh, you fool. This isn't our monster. This isn't anybody's monster. Look, it's just a bit of tat. But... Somebody's dressing up costume. But who would want to dress up like that? I expect Gary Glitter's in town. Gary Glitter? <laughs> Where? What on earth? You! Help! Somebody call the police! The vixen on that Jose Cuervo! Who's the vixen? Ah! That's the vixen. She's got a gun! Right. So if you'll all kindly put your hands above your heads. I wouldn't do that if I were you, Mr. Green. Oh, I bash my nose. Uh, Mr. McHugh, did you call the police? I? Oh, good. Then you have about 30 seconds to leave. Very considerate of you, Mr. Green. Come on. But what about the... Not in front of witnesses, you fool. Hurry up. But I haven't found the police. 
Well, they didn't know that. Well, hadn't someone better do that now? Oh, what a good idea. Any volunteers, Elizabeth? Mm -hmm. Ah! Oh, my monster costume! They've torn it into pieces! Oh, that's all right. <laughs> Uncle Jack doesn't need a costume to be a horrible monster. <laughs> and thus, he drank the potion down and fell and lay upon the ground. And that was the end of Jekyll and Hyde. Two men in one body, side by side. And now, Dr. Jekyll, here is the news. Mr. Hyde is going to sing the blues. I woke up one morning. Something wasn't right. I looked over in the mirror. Jack, you should turn professional. Don't encourage him, Edward. We'll never hear the last of it. Oh, Mr. McHugh, you were wonderful. Oh, thank you. I am Mr. McHugh. I'm Rowena Carlyle Ross, and I'm from the tourist board. And anyone who can put on that kind of performance deserves recognition. Thank you. I shall authorise a grant at once so that you can renovate this lovely old building. Yay! Let the rafters ring! Hooray! Oh. oh. Well, I must go now. I have to go and see Pavarotti. Oh, it won't be a patch on this, but... Oh, I shall treasure the memory forever. Oh, cheer you then. Bye. Oh, thank you very much, my good man. She must be potty. Oh, thank you, Michael. And uh, thank you, Mr. Green. You have saved my home. And as a reward, you may stay on and do the show for the run of the festival. Oh, thank you, Mr. McHugh. Uh, but I rather fancy we ought to get back to the peace and quiet of Loch Knock. <laughs> right, family? Bye. <laughs> Anyway, but I do need a break from the break now. 